Hi, I'm Pat Kahn, and this is my blog. So this is actually very late, or it's very early. Uh, I meant to do, to record um, an episode last Friday. I guess episode maybe is a little bit of a weird term here, but uh, but I kind of got delayed by a whole bunch of things, and then I just kind of forgot about it. And now it's uh, well, it's a little bit later than I meant to uh, meant it to be, being uh, Monday evening or Tuesday morning, depending on how you count things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been an interesting week. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing recently, I, I played through a game called Child of Light, which was really uh, fantastic. It's um, it's this, so it's a side-scroller that's uh, with a separate combat mode, which is also side-scrolling, that a lot of people are describing as being Japanese RPG-ish, um, I mean, I guess it's kind of like that. It might have a certain similarity to maybe Final Fantasy I for the NES 8. Um, or maybe there are some more recent Japanese RPGs that it's very similar to that I'm not aware of. But it's it's fantastic because it, it has great music. It, it, it's art is done in a style which, uh, which looks a lot like watercolor, like somebody really just took... Uh, had um, had watercolors, or maybe had a um, uh, a Cintiq or something, and drew all the levels and used that as the basis for the game. Maybe that's what they actually did, but um, it has it also has a great story. It just it gets all the details right. It's not a big complicated game. It's not going to take you a, a super long time to play through, but it's beautiful. And one of the, the nice bonuses that I found when I was looking for the music is that uh, Google Music has it, which uh, I'm subscribed to that. It's like eight bucks a month. Uh, Google has a reasonably large catalog of music, which you get access to, uh, unlimited access to, so long as you're subscribed to them. So I was happy not to need to buy the soundtrack for now. Um, and it's just it's really good music. I mean, I'm still kind of curious how the, the Google, uh, Google Music uh, funding model works, but um, and yeah, on the topic of music, I also found out that Fiona Apple, another musician that I, I rather like, she uh, did a song called uh, Dual Tool. Um, she did it as part of a soundtrack to some movie, um, and that, that that's also on the service, so uh, it's, if, if you're a fan of, of her music uh, too, then or is it accurate to say fan of, of music or fan of a person? I don't know, whatever. If you like her music, then go uh, track down uh, that song. It sounds a reasonably like her most recent album, which has a terribly long title, I think. But it's it's good stuff. Um, Wolfenstein, uh, the, the the new one. Uh, what's what's it called? Uh, yeah, Wolfenstein New Order. Uh, it's it's coming out today. Uh, it's actually already uh, already available. It became available at midnight. Um, so my, I'm downloading it right now and looking forward to playing it when it's, uh, when it's done downloading. It should be great. I haven't played, um, I haven't played a Wolfenstein game, uh, Wolfenstein game for a fairly long time. I wanted to get the, the most recent one that was published in like 2005 or some, uh, some, sometime around then with weird supernational, uh, super, super, nat not supernational, supernatural stuff and uh, like flipping into alternate realities and, and things like that. But actually, I thought that I was getting that when I ordered the, um, I think it was an id software pack or maybe a Wolfenstein software pack that it looked like it had all the games in the series, but wasn't paying enough attention. And I got all the old DOS games and didn't get, uh, didn't get that one. Or maybe it was just an entire id software pack, except for that game. So I think actually that that one maybe it wasn't made by it. Uh, anyhow, I, I should have paid more attention. Didn't actually get that game. One and two, and I haven't really found a place to download that game. Uh, I mean, I guess I, I wouldn't really care between paying for it or not paying for it, since I don't really believe in intellectual property. But um, but yeah, I've just been uh, been un uh, unable to to find it. So. Bit of a bummer, but in, in any case, this I'm looking forward to this new one. Apparently, it has a lot of different play styles. Uh, it might have skill trees. Has a lot of goofy weapons. 
Um, should be neat. Uh, it looks like it's going to take a while to download if, if the progress bar is any indication. Um, there should be a GOAT simulator coming out soon. Looking forward to that since it's supposed to add a new map and it's supposed to add the ability of your bike to, to do some parkour, maybe riding on bicycles, uh, just a whole bunch of other goofy stuff. I mean, GOAT Simulator is not really a game that I sit down and play seriously. It's just a, a fun way to let off a little bit of steam when I, uh, I don't know, when I, I think I need it, or just provide some mild brief entertainment. I mean, uh, Binding of Isaac, uh, Isaac, Isaac, uh, Isaac, I think, um, it's a little bit like that too, uh, except uh, with GOAT Simulator, it's more unstructured because the game doesn't really have, uh, have a, be a beginning or an end. With Binding of Isaac, it's really more of the type of game where I, I want to play for a brief period of time, but I'm okay with either winning or losing and not entirely controlling my time commitment. Uh, since it has more of a structure to it, if you die, you really die in that game. Well, in any case, uh, other things going on. I finally have my next job uh, lined up, and I should be starting it in about a week. Looking forward to it. Um, I have a fair amount of things to brush up on. Uh, in my last job, I used Puppet, and previously I used Puppet a little bit. I'm going to be learning Chef for this job. Um, apparently, they're not very different. Uh, some people I know have suggested that Chef is a little bit, a uh, little bit nicer than Puppet in a lot of regards, and it doesn't tend towards the uh, the brain damage that comes from using uh, using too many of the features of Puppet. And that Puppet, as I might have talked about this before, Puppet's a great tool if you use it just as a, if you use its, base, uh, its basic facilities and don't go into the weird weird things that you can do with it. Don't go too much into all, all of the goofy classes that you can use that really take you away from understanding the config files that you're building and stuff. Uh, I mean, Puppet encourages a lot of really bad habits that take you away from being a good sysadmin. And apparently, or at least from what I hear, Chef doesn't do that. At least I hope it doesn't, but I'll learn. And I guess if, if it's the common practice with Chef, then I'll do it that way with Chef. But, uh, but yeah, I haven't really started with, uh, with uh, Chef yet. I'll probably be doing that over the next few days. Um, yeah, just at once, once you're a senior enough person, picking up a new tool isn't something that takes you too long. Um, but yeah, I'll be senior systems engineer at this company. Looking forward to it. Should be cool. Um, so, yep. Uh, there's also I'm pretty uh, happy that Rift Tracks. So the guys. Uh, so three of the guys who did MST3K, uh, Mike Nelson, um, Bill Corbett, and um, oh man, this is embarrassing. And, and and really, I, I like the three of them just about uh, e uh, evenly. Uh, but uh, Mike Nelson, Bill Corbett, and t uh, Tim Murphy. I think that's right. Uh, yeah, they did. Uh, um, they, yeah, they were three of the, the main characters from MST, uh, or I'm um, three of the actors from MST3K. And since MST3K got canceled some time back by uh, by the the Sci-Fi Channel, now Siffy or however you pronounce that. Um, They've, they've, they're still uh, riffing movies, but they're doing it in a slightly different way. Uh, and they sell basically MP3s that you play at the same time as you start a movie, like if you own the DVD. And so uh, they don't need to negotiate for the rights to do, uh, to do that kind of thing. Although sometimes they do negotiate for the rights, and you can get uh, download a, a, a video MPEG of the whole uh, of a whole movie with with the riffs inserted nicely. So. But in any case, so they've been doing Rift Track, uh, Rift, Rift Track live events. Um, they actually negotiate for the rights to a movie, and they show it in theaters across the country and live broadcast, I think, um, their riffing uh, to, uh, to those theaters. So it's kind of like a distributed MST3K experience. Except, I mean, you, you see them as people rather than their characters. I mean, Mike Nelson was kind of like a goofy version of himself, but... Um, uh, Tim Murphy and um, oh come on, brain memory, uh, and Bill Corbett. Uh, they, they they were a pro T robot and uh, and Tom Servo in the show, and um, 
but yeah, here they're, they're just as themselves. And But yeah, the, the riffing is good. The humor is fantastic. So what I was meaning to mention is that the, uh, the most recent Riff Track Live uh, event is a Riff Tracks Live event that they've been uh, hoping to do is uh, Godzilla, the 1999 or 98 version. Um, not a particularly good film, although it did have... Uh, Jamiroquai did uh, a song called Deeper Underground that used a modified version of footage from that film, which was kind of cool, which is actually the main reason I know that that film exists. I uh, might have seen part of it and decided not to watch the whole thing. Um, but yeah, they they did a Kickstarter to, to raise 100 k to get the rights to the film. Uh, they put it for one month, uh, for, uh, and they want to get, yeah, as I said, 100 k and a little, in a little bit less than twelve hours, they they uh, they hit their goal, and it's still been climbing ever since. Uh, since they still have like something like twenty five days left in, in the Kickstarter, and I think they're up somewhere around one hundred fifty k now, which is pretty cool. It it just shows how how much uh, of a culturally prominent thing, at least among a certain portion of the population, uh, MST three K was. And it's great that they're able to continue that and. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm really happy that it looks like the rip tracks for that Godzilla is going to get made. Um, it's a little bit weird in the sense that the rewards uh, for that Kickstarter, they can't actually give tickets to that because that would involve negotiating with every theater that um, that's, uh, that's showing the film. It would be a nightmare. So instead, they're offering like some uh, some short rips to... Uh, they're, they're offering things that they already have in the Rick Prax catalog. So in a sense, they're cannibalizing some of their existing products, or at least potentially can cannibalizing some of their existing products in order to get the capital to do a future, um, to do a, a future live event. But, I mean, I don't know how many people would have uh, bought those products anyhow. And, and I suppose really a, a lot of the stuff that businesses do does involve using some of the profits from one uh, or profits or opportunities from one product to subsidize the creation of other products. But, but yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm glad that uh, the, the community, I mean, I'm part of it, uh, obviously, small part. Um, I mean, just another person who put in a certain amount of money. But I'm glad that the community came together to make this happen, or at least to help fund this. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing Godzilla. I think it's in July or August that they're planning to do it. And I guess it's interesting looking at all these uh, existing crowdsourcing things. Um, like there's uh, Indiegogo, there's Kickstarter, there, there are a few other things, uh, uh, Patreon. And the problem is actually, uh, that I have with them is that it's often too hard to find the things that you would like, you might potentially like to fund and get involved with. Um, and I mean, it's not too hard for the charity things, and there are charity things that I really believe in with the, with these, particularly literacy programs. I think those literacy, security, um, and uh, and basic infrastructure like running water, roads, uh, electric uh, electricity, those those kinds of things, they're really essential to helping uh, various parts of the world start to, to build a, at least a semi-modern economy. Uh, if you, you get people educated and you give them these basic bits of infrastructure, and they can start to modernize bit by bit. And ideally, they choose their own style and speed of modernization. So it doesn't have to destroy all their local industry with the hopes of providing a new one. Um, but yeah, that's, those are the kinds of things I, I tend to crowd, uh, or, or I tend to seek out and fund. But there are also the fun things that are more or less for me. And it's hard to really find uh, to find these things, and, and I keep on finding past Kickstarter things where I wish that I'd heard about them while they were still open to funding. Uh, it's a good way to like get neat rewards and and stuff like that. Uh, get products that might or might not ever go beyond the Kickstarter stage. I'm enthusiastic about Kickstarter. I think it's a really neat idea, and Indiegogo, and, and, and this this whole series of things, but. They really, really need to get better at, at figuring out a way to make it easy for me to find the stuff that I might potentially be interested in funding, but I don't know about.
And I'll be, I don't think advertisements are the right way to do that. Just better topical search engines and better topical suggestions that you can subscribe to. Things like that. Um, but, um, and I guess I'm, there are some things where I'm still thinking about uh, in philosophy. Uh, one of the, the, the longer term things I've been thinking about is how to revise at will employment. Um, what would good employment law look like? But that's, that's still a project. Um, so I, I guess let's look at what's, what's been going on for roughly the last week. Um, I don't actually remember quite when I recorded the last one. I'm guessing it's the Friday before last Friday when I thought I was going to be doing this. Um, there was a Guggenheim members event that I meant to go to, but as I really got all dressed and ready to go, I realized that I've probably seen that exhibit too many times recently. Need, I need at least a little, little bit of a break. It's a great exhibit, um, but I was just tired. Um, on Saturday, uh, I went to the American Museum of Natural History with a friend. Um, on, uh, on Sunday, I went to uh, Smorgasburg, which is a... Uh, Have I really not talked about this yet? Uh, well, in any case, yeah, it's a food festival that um, that's uh, held every uh, every uh, weekend. Uh, it's held Saturday and Sunday at different locations, and uh, just a, a bunch of kind of art, artsy uh, food places are. Um, they all have stalls. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, the Monday after that, I well, actually, I had a migraine on Sunday. Also had a migraine on Monday, but I went to a cosmic cocktail event, which actually didn't involve any alcohol. It's it, it was rather um, a a lecture by uh, an a, I think astrophysicist. Uh, she hmm, was she an astrophysicist or or just a, a physicist? She wasn't a cosmologist, but it was a a, a lecture about um, a lecture about uh, current theories and dark matter and things like that. And, uh, but I, I was also feeling kind of headachey for most of, the, of that day. Tuesday didn't do anything interesting. Wednesday had an on-site interview with one of the two companies that I was talking with. And then I went uh, later that evening, I went to a Postgres user group, uh, user group meeting uh, about um, mistakes that, uh, that one of the companies that presented well, they they were trying to learn how to scale Postgres and want to share some of the interesting mistakes they made so that people can avoid making those in the future. That was pretty neat. Um, so it covered a lot of the same things that the Postgres conference that I went to, uh, I think, last month uh, covered. Um, Thursday didn't do anything interesting. On Friday, I went to the Brooklyn Museum with another friend, uh, and I meant to be... Uh, blogging that that day, but yeah, I just never got around to it. Um, Saturday, I don't remember what I did. On Sunday, I went to... Oh, yeah, and, and actually that was weird. So Saturday evening, uh, up until like 4 a.m., there was a super loud uh, house party that one of my neighbors was having, and I was... It just would not stop, and it was so loud that it sounded like someone was placing playing music reasonably loud inside my apartment. It was that loud. It was crazy. Um, filed a complaint with the police. Took, took, uh, they, they didn't get to it in time. So eventually, my neighborhood has kind of a heavy police presence. It's not a, it's not really a super sketchy neighborhood, but it's not the best of neighborhoods. But I eventually just, uh, I, I left my house multiple times trying to find a police person where I, uh, to where I could deliver my complaint to them in person. And eventually I found one, I think it was at 4 a.m. Uh, and by 4.30 they had uh, shut that party down. But it was it was just really ridiculous. It messed me up the next day, but what can you do? Um, on Saturday, I went to a, uh, I mean, I was still really tired because of the messed up sleep schedule, but I went to a, uh, philosophy meetup 
one that I, I've never been to before on Stoicism, which was pretty neat. Uh, it was kind of a surprising meetup. We went uh, argument by argument over a, um, it was a, uh, a, a syllogistic argument for Stoicism. And we examined all of the suppositions and all of the derived arguments from that. Not, not really my style of arguments in philosophy. Again, difference between analytic and continental style. The continentals are really more making arguments uh, to, they're, they're looking for flavor usually, and they're looking for um, aesthetic arguments, to a certain extent, arguments that are emotionally appealing, intellectually appealing, but it's more of an appeal rather than a, a proof, whereas analytics like to think of their arguments as proofs. But yeah, it was, it was interesting. I didn't really agree with entirely with any of the suppositions. So I, but I mean, in philosophy, you're trying to give people a hard time. And if their argument still stands up after you've given them a hard time, then it's generally a pretty strong argument. But uh, it was, uh, and so, some friends I, uh, I knew are there, or at least, uh, um, or yeah, so it was good to bump into them. Uh, and then afterwards, I went to a current events meetup, uh, which was a little bit weird. I mean, it got relocated to a bar, but the bar actually happened to have excellent food. And it had my favorite kind of soup, um, a potato leek soup. So uh, definitely went there. Was the, the discussions there are interesting. They're not quite as interesting as some of the other groups I go to, just because they have such a weird, weird flavoring of perspectives. But I mean, some of that is that there's a, a reasonably strong conservative bent uh, to the group. Uh, but I mean, and, and I guess that's a little bit, I mean, I, anybody who has a position, they're going to find it a little bit weird to be, uh, I mean, a political uh, a leaning. They're going to find it weird to be taking part in discussion when most of the people there lean in a different direction. But still, that, that conversation was good and respectful, civil, and uh, enlightening. Um, yesterday, I had tea with a friend, and, oh, that was today. I had tea with a friend, and then we went to see, I uh, went to an Elizabeth Warren book signing, but unfortunately, uh, I, I was hoping that there would be a, a, that she would be giving a talk on her book, but instead, uh, it was just a signing. But, uh, I don't know, it was the first time I've seen her in person, uh, pretty neat. Uh, and then afterwards, I went to a meetup on the philosophy of David Hume. And the person who, who holds this meetup, he's a much bigger fan of Hume than I am. I mean, not that I dis dislike Hume, but it's just, he's not, for me, a towering figure in philosophy. He's just one uh, reasonably interesting dude with a lot of, uh, lot of opinions uh, and a lot of views. But, um, but yeah, it's, it went pretty well. I mean, there was a, an odd social side to this that I was deeply uncomfortable with, but, uh, I mean, just some, something happened uh, at that meetup, and I just uh, really was kind of put off by that, but it wasn't, didn't have anything to do with the topic, and it didn't have anything to do with the person, uh, uh, with, the, with the host for the, uh, for the evening. It, it was a, a side matter, and I don't really want to get into it on completely open uh, forums, but, um, in any case, yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to starting that, that job next uh, next week. Um, starting, they're starting to put together uh, the uh, at least some of the initial uh, equipment I'm going to uh, going to need when I when I start there. Um, but yeah, I, I actually uh, earlier today, by today I mean Monday, uh, I sent in the paperwork uh, and accepting it and all that. And it's just a matter of starting to. Uh, to get the details set up so that I'm ready to, uh, ready to, to hit the ground running when I, uh, when I get there. There are, there's some things I need to learn, as I mentioned, like chef, but it should be good. Um, uh, I don't really have a lot planned for, uh, for, for Tuesday, but, oh, I also recently saw Hellraiser, which, is a it's an old horror film. It's a very creative horror film. It's not really particularly horrific. It's um, it's not really all that scary, but it's conceptually interesting and kind of creepy. 
but yeah, it's just I I knew that it existed for a long time. I just never really got around to seeing it. Um, I've been meaning to rewatch the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Um, I mean, except for number two. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is just a, a film that I've never managed to get into. It, It's not nearly as... I mean, so the Nightmare on Elm Street series, the first, the second, and the... Uh, and the the new Nightmare, and Wes Cra Craven's new Nightmare, those are really... They're very different in flavor from the rest of them, uh, in that they're straight horror films with, I mean, a little bit of a sense of humor to them, not a lot. Um, and yeah, the, the first and the uh, new nightmare, they're just fantastic, uh, films in general. I think they're very well made. Uh, they have compelling stories. New nightmare is, is really very made up, but it's, it's a great film. Um, yeah, just the second one was really kind of a stinker. Um, but the, the other films in the series, uh, they're more fantasy, uh, horror. And they have light elements of comedy to them, but it's really, you're watching them significantly for the creativity in the wolves that they uh, portray. And I like that. It's neat to watch those. It gives you neat inspiration for uh, dreams and things like that. Uh, daydreams, uh, dreams, stories. Um, I... I would kind of. I think I would enjoy the 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 those films as much, even if they didn't have the main character in them. Just the weird, distorted mirror of reality. That's. It's interesting to see that done well, and they're like they're trying to be, creepy without being super scary. I mean, they do have a lot of deaths, but they're almost comic deaths, or at least for some of them. Uh, the horror elements are just about evenly balanced with. The uh, fantasy elements, but it, it's urban fantasy mostly. Um, so yeah, it's it's good stuff, and I, I probably, uh, yeah, I'm probably in the mood to uh, to rewatch those. Um, yeah, not a lot else uh, going on. Um, I'm starting to to adjust my sleep schedule so that I'll be ready to to uh, ready to go into work at the right times. Uh, I've I've also been getting a little bit of a little bit of help from friends comments on some of the teaching materials, so hopefully those those will move in the right directions, uh, and uh, I'll have those in a presentable state soon. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh. Um, I guess the other game that I've been playing a little bit uh, recently is um. Uh, where is it? It's a Long Live the Queen, which is another, it's kind of, it's almost a piece of interactive fiction that's, uh, that's, I mean, it's wrapped in a nice gooey, but um, you're trying to, to make decisions as a young pr uh, princess who's ruling a realm to help her survive and actually make it to her coronation and keep her, her uh, realm uh, healthy. And it's fun. I, I got I got the idea to play it uh, play it from uh, from a let's play that uh, Dodger did and uh, on YouTube. And yes, yeah, it's, it's a pretty entertaining game. It's kind of the same kind of um, it, it's the same kind of light entertainment that uh, that that you see with um, like the Binding of Isaac. Um, I'm really hoping that at some point we see more from the uh, from the Half Life series, or maybe the Portal series. It's it's weird not to uh, it's weird not to have a game in that uh, in a story that kind of paused at a weird weird moment. It, it's been paused for for so many years. I'm hoping that it picks up, uh, picks back up again at some point soon. Yeah, I think that's that's all I have to talk about right uh, right now. I guess I'll see you uh, next week. I'm not sure when I'm going to do the next one of these. Since uh, I've waited to do this in, in, until it's like Monday evening, and it would be maybe a little weird to be doing another one on Friday, but I guess I'm hoping to get back to a re uh, to the regular uh, schedule uh, for this. But anyway, yeah, you'll see it when uh, when you see it. Uh, take care. Be well.